Hi, it's Carol from ReadingGroupGuys.com and I want to share a little bit more about the books that you're going to be seeing on the site this month. We've just got such a great lineup for you and I love doing these little conversations with you so we can hear a little bit about, a little bit more about the titles that we're going to be featuring. First, we have Annalise, which is written by David Gillum. Uh, many of you may remember him that he wrote City of Women, a big bestseller years ago um, that we were all super, super crazy about. Um, in this book, we've got a reimagining of what if Anne Frank did not die in the concentration camp. What if she went and lived, and it's now 1945, she's 16 years old, and she's trying to adjust to life after the, in the aftermath of World War II. So very, very interesting premise something that would be uh, great for discussion, especially if you're a group that's been talking about World War II books for a while now, a different perspective. Next, we've got Yale Needs Women, how the first group of girls rewrote the rules of an Ivy League giant. Now, what's really interesting about this book is 50 years ago, Yale was basically told that they were going to have to keep it standing as one of the top two or three colleges only if they would admit women. And it was something that they could no longer do without. And this is the story about the first group of women, what happened with the university, and what was going on at the time. And I find it very interesting that 50 years later, this is something that we're talking about now. It's a book that's got a lot of uh, rich history of what was happening during the times, and also just what we think of right now as co-ed education, and why it was such a big topic at that moment. And let's see if you've heard about this book, you know, the, one of the best kept secrets. It's The Testaments by Margaret Atwood. Um, heavily embargoed book, just came out last week. It's the Barnes & Noble selection. And that means that if you want to discuss this book, either with your book group or going to discuss it with a group that will be gathering at Barnes & Noble on Wednesday, October 9th at 7 o'clock, at each of the Barnes & Nobles around the country, you can go have a discussion. One of the Testaments, um, you probably do know, it's the follow-up to The Handmaid's Tale. Long awaited, and be very interested to see what your groups are thinking about this book. I absolutely loved The Dearly Beloved by Kara Wall. Um, I picked it as a bets on selection this summer, and I'm so excited to see that it's also a Today Show selection. Um, what we have here is two young ministers that are both going to be ministering at the same church down in Lower Manhattan. As the book opens, they're meeting the people who will be their future wives at the respective schools that they're going to for the first time. So it is stories about their relationships with these women, their marriages, and then how they come together to be working at this parish together. Now the big thing for me when I was reading this and when they were both assigned to the same church was, uh, who's going to live in the parsonage? I'm not going to give it away, but it's really interesting because one couple did want to live there and the other one dramatically did not. But it's a story of their strife in their marriages and how real life unwinds. For those who liked Ask Again Yes uh, by Mary Beth Keen earlier this summer, this is one you want to take a look at. It's another exploration of what real life feels like. And we have This Tender Land by William Ken Kruger. We've got our guide up on the site, and we've also got commentary from 10 book groups that actually read this book in advance. Remember, we had our contest for this book, so you can see what they're saying about it and see why your group would be interested in reading this as well. If any of the book groups read Ordinary Grace, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at this tender land. It's beautifully said. Um, just so you know, when Kent was writing this, what he was really thinking about was his version of Huck Finn. And that's what he sees this story as being. And it's a group of four orphans as they travel down the Gilead River to the Mississippi trying to get to St. Louis where they feel like they're going to be rescued and there's great hope awaiting, awaiting them. And to see what flips at the end of this book is just a beautifully written story. So something to treasure and read and enjoy. Speaking of a book that I really enjoyed, we've got The Beekeeper of Aleppo, which is by Christy Leftieri. I met Christy at Book Expo earlier this year and did a real quick on the fly interview with her. Unfortunately, the sound acoustics were so bad in the place that it didn't really work. So we've transcribed that interview for you so you can get to know her. She wrote this book after working in a refugee camp in Athens. Um, she was drawn to write the story because she was one day sitting on the island of Cyprus, which was her family ancestral home, and looked across the water and saw it was such beautiful, like blue waters in front of her, and she knew the strife that was going on the other side of those waters over in Syria. As a result, she decided that she would like to go there to Athens and see how she could help the refugees. She spoke Greek, and how could she just, you know, help out with this crisis? 
this story sprang from that meeting or from those meetings with those people. And what we've got here is the story of a beekeeper who has had his fields completely annihilated in Syria. He needs to move on with his family. He's going through Greece, but Greece is only a stopping point. And his goal is to get to the UK where a friend has already started new hives and how they're moving it along. And at the same time, his artist wife is blind and their child is gone. So it's a beautiful story if you like the kite runner, if you like stories of what's happening in foreign lands you don't know that much about, it's a reason you want to be picking this up. And our What's Your Book Group reading prize book this month is Heartland by Sarah Smarsh, which was a bets on selection of mine when it came out in hardcover last year. I listened to it on audio, which is narrated by Sarah, and it's just wonderful. This is a story of four generations of people growing up in the heartland of America hardworking people who are on the edge of poverty the entire time and how she springs herself out of that cycle of poverty. What she does, but also the story of the family that she loves that came before her and what kind of obstacles they all have to overcome just within everyday life. Love this book. There's a lot to discuss in it. Once again, to be eligible to win this book, and actually you're gonna be winning 12 copies for your group, three groups will be winning, all you have to do is pop on and tell us what your book group is reading this month. Now look, you don't tell us what the prize book is. We know what the prize book is. We wanna know what your book group is reading. And then you can also be able to go on and look later on this month and see what other book groups are reading. Perhaps it will be inspiring you as well. So that's our early September update. We'll be back later in the month with more books that we're interested in sharing with you. And we hope you have a really great book group discussion this month. Thanks for joining me.